Hi, if you're new to Affinity Photo and coming from other image editing software, I'll take you through where some of the basic functionality is you would be expecting to find. First, let's cover actually opening an existing image or a photograph. You can of course use the more traditional file open method, but you can also drag drop images onto the interface to open them. With either approach, the image data becomes the initial background layer that you see here on the layer stack. When you drag drop additional images in over the top of the document view here, they will be placed into the same document as additional layers. Instead, if you're trying to open multiple images as separate documents, you'll want to drag drop them to the top area of the interface before releasing the mouse button. Now, if you're opening a raw file, photo will behave differently. You'll be taken into a separate workspace or what we call persona for initial raw development. This gives you a set of intuitive options, including non-destructive raw, to shape the initial result of your image before clicking develop up here. At this point, you'll move back through to the main photo persona or workspace where you have access to all the usual tools. I'll quickly cover creating a new blank document. You do this via File, New, and you have a series of presets to choose from which are separated into logical categories. You can change your document measurement unit, dimensions or pixel resolution, DPI, color format and profile, and configure margins if required. Now, if you copy image data to the clipboard, and want to quickly create a new document with that data, you can go to File, New from Clipboard. This will instantly create a document with the correct dimensions and color space for you. This also works with multiple layers. For example, if you wanted to duplicate part of a layer stack into a new document. When it comes to transforming layers, you'll want the Move tool. This is located here on the Tools panel, or you can switch to it with V on the keyboard. The layer you currently have selected can then be manipulated. Drag anywhere within the bounding box to move the layer around. Drag one of the handles to scale it. Dragging from a corner handle will scale pixel, image, or text content proportionally and other content non-proportionally. You can hold Shift to invert this behavior. Scaling whilst holding Command on Mac, Control on Windows, will scale around the center of the layer. You can rotate by click dragging on the dedicated rotation handle, or by hovering just outside of the corner handles. And then you can shear by hovering just outside of the top, bottom, left or right handles, and click dragging. If you want to perform a four-point perspective transformation non-destructively, you can go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Distort, Perspective. And this will add a Live Perspective filter to the current layer. From the Live Filters menu, you also have access to Live Liquify and Live Mesh Warp. All layer transformations in the Affinity apps are intrinsically non-destructive. Regardless of the layer type, the apps always work with the highest internal resolution available for each layer. This means if you scale a layer down, the original data is not resampled. So at any time in the future, you can scale a layer back up and restore its original quality. Non-destructive adjustment layers are present, as well as live filter layers. To add an adjustment layer, you can go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, or you can click the Adjustments icon on the Layers panel. Common shortcuts are also available, such as Command-M or Control-M for curves. Regardless of how you add an adjustment layer, they are always non-destructive. Affinity doesn't have destructive and non-destructive variants. You can control layer opacity using this option. And also use keyboard shortcuts, pressing two keys in quick succession for a specific value. Blend modes can be combined with adjustments for further tonal control, such as using a luminosity blend mode with a black and white adjustment. When it comes to masking, adjustments and live filters have their own alpha channels, which are effectively built-in masks. This means you don't need to add or attach separate mask layers to them. 
For example, I'll use a brightness contrast adjustment to brighten the eyes on the cat here. I'll bring both sliders up. Then I'll go to layer, invert. Or alternatively, I could use command I on Mac, control I on Windows. This inverts the alpha channel of the adjustment, so currently it's not rendering at all. Now I can switch to the paintbrush tool with B, set my active color to white, bring the hardness down, increase the width, and brush into the eyes. And this will show the adjustment over these areas. Now we have a feature called Live Filters, which you may not have come across before. Photo has a roster of filters you can apply from the Filters menu, but these are destructive. On the Layer menu, however, you'll find the new Live Filter Layer category. These are non-destructive implementations of various filters. For example, you have all the Blur filters, Unsharp Mask, Clarity and High Pass, and Distortion filters, among other options. I'll apply a Live Unsharp Mask to this image then set the radius to 1, and max out the factor. I can perform further editing on my image. Then at any time, I can click on the Unsharp Mask thumbnail to bring the dialog back up and modify the parameters. The result is composited in real time. For another quick example, I'll apply a live motion blur to the football here. Many of the filters are interactive in the sense that you can click-drag on the document view to alter their parameters. For motion blur, this allows me to set the radius and rotation of the blur. Use live filters where possible to avoid needing to merge layer content, duplicate layers, or create a form of smart layer. This keeps your layer stack fully dynamic and also reduces document file sizes. Layer clipping and masking works a bit differently in Affinity, and it's one of the key areas that can take a bit of adjustment. Once you know how, it's easy though. To clip a layer to the bounds of another layer, you just click-drag it over the text area of the target layer, not the thumbnail. So for example, I'll show this image layer, and I want to clip it to the bounds of this rounded rectangle here. I'll drag the image layer, offer it over the text of the rounded rectangle layer, and release the mouse button. This makes it a child layer. You can see when a layer has child layers because of the small carré icon here. I can click it to expand the parent layer and see the child layer inside it. You can release a layer and make it a parent again by click dragging it out and bringing it anywhere in the main layer stack. Now I could approach this the other way round by dragging the rounded rectangle layer onto the thumbnail of the image layer. This causes the rounded rectangle to act as a mask. You can see the mask thumbnail appear to the right here. Again, to release this layer, I can either drag it back out to the parent layer stack, or I can right-click it and choose Release Mask. Clipping can, of course, be used for adjustments and live filters as well. Here, I'll add a curves adjustment. Then I'll immediately child layer it inside the floating island layer. I'll push the red channel up on this adjustment to make the island blend more appropriately with the rest of the scene. As you can see, the effect is restricted to the bounds of the floating island layer. Now, mask layers should be more familiar in their approach. I'll select and show this image layer. Then I'll add a mask layer to it using this option on the layers panel. Now I can switch to the paintbrush tool with B. And the active color defaults to black which will subtract from the mask. I get a real-time preview of how the mask will affect the image it's clipped to, and I can just brush in and remove this area from the image. Masking is of course non-destructive, so a good example may be if I hide this area down here, and then decide I want to bring it back. I can switch primary and secondary colors using X, so now my active color is white. Then I can paint and reveal those areas again, using X to switch to black and subtract again if required. Just be mindful that when you add a mask, it's automatically selected on the layers panel so you can modify it. If I move away to work on another layer, I can easily select the mask again by clicking it. 
For users who are big on brushing, this next one will be of interest. When using various brush tools, you have a keyboard and mouse modifier that lets you quickly change brush parameters. You can hold Ctrl and Option on Mac, Ctrl and Alt on Windows, and a tooltip will appear. You can now hold the left mouse button and drag left or right to modify width, and up or down to modify hardness. However, if you single click instead, it will toggle across to shape and spacing parameters. Another single click toggles across to rotation. Then once more, we'll toggle back to width and hardness. Using this technique, you can very quickly create a soft, oval brush shape, ideal for blocking in shadow detail for entourage in an arcviz scene, for example. You can, of course, also modify brush width using the left and right bracket keys. If you hold Shift whilst pressing these keys, it will modify hardness instead. And finally, nozzle rotation can be changed using the left and right arrow keys. To round off this video, I'll quickly go over some other key functionality. Color format conversion is performed via the document menu, where you can convert to a specific bit depth and color profile, or assign a profile. Additional panels can be shown via the window menu, and this is where you can access functionality such as scopes, typically only seen in video editing software, 32-bit preview options for high dynamic range workflows, and macros to record and playback multiple operations, with which you can achieve all manner of useful effects and workflow enhancements. Finally, do have a look at the available support options. The app has a traditional help system that is searchable, a quick start guide, and plenty of concise, informative video tutorials that will teach you a variety of useful techniques. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy using the software.